Hi guys, welcome back to another video. If this has made it onto YouTube, you know it's worked. It's going to be about the fourth time I've tried this video. So we're recording from the Quest 3 here. I want to cover the Steam Link application and a few things I've been tinkering with. Um, I have a, had a break from VR so I'm a bit behind on this, but first of all, if you've watched any of my previous videos, um, I've mentioned that the Ethernet works on the Quest 3 by USB-C. So Virtual Desktop can make use of that. I can have the maximum bitrate at the lowest latency. Um, and unfortunately, that isn't working for Steam Link because when you disable the Wi-Fi on the Quest 3, this gets grayed out and you can't launch it. it. As soon as you launch it, it asks you to enable your Wi-Fi. And as soon as you do that, you can't use the Ethernet. It just doesn't, it doesn't listen to the Ethernet. So that's unfortunate, um, which means I'm limited on my Wi-Fi 5, 5 gigahertz router to about 250 bitrate. Um, so I can't actually max this and see what it's like. I really, really hope this video comes across okay now. So I'm going to cover a little tip that I've seen floating around online, which is increasing the video encode resolution. Now if I connect to my PC, this all goes well. And bring up the Steam VR overlay. Okay, so as you can see in the VR settings, in the Steam Link settings, the encode video size is now 1536 rather than the maximum 1344 that's on the slider. Um, I've manually overridden this from the config file, and that's obviously the tip that's floating around online. 1536 is the max value you can set. If you set anything more it's just going to bounce you back to this um, that may be a solution to forcing um, the 1344 maximum or even this one if you have an AMD GPU because I know from reading it online um, it's bouncing you back sort of three quarters way up the graph that is your video card driver issue um, unfortunately on AMD it's not to do with Steam Link I know you can shout at Steam Link because I see you think it's got a problem but AMD GPU drivers are just um, typical like typically bad in VR so unfortunately that is is what it is. Um, for me I want to actually cover a warning to doing this and obviously I don't think people are really paying attention to what's happening so when I increase this video encode size and just continue to try and play at even well I'll leave it at 90 in a minute I can actually use 120 because I just see a motion artifact in the controllers and What's actually causing that is the encoder is not making frame rate. So the HMD is making 120, but the encoder is like 108, 109. Um, it's not making 120. Um, and if I bring up my desktop and get rid of Steam, you can see my video encoder on a RTX 3080 Ti, 120 FPS with that increased video encode width. I'm maxed out on the video encode, so there is no hope of using this for me um, smoothly at 120 FPS. If I drop it to 90, then I get a little bit of my head ring back, but it's honestly still quite taxing for what is 90 FPS, um, it's 80% on the video encoder. Now, obviously if I was doing any streaming to Discord, YouTube, anything like that, um, using the NVENC encoder, I've not really got a lot of head ring to do that, um, not at a decent bit rate anyway. Um, so unfortunately, unless you've got like a 40 series GPU or something, um, you really can't make use of that thing, um, that tip with the encode size and have 120 hertz. So for me personally, I would always choose smoothness over visuals. And when I've increased this, I honestly can't even see the difference with how close I am to the lenses. I really need to change this face plate. I can't see the difference. I personally can't see the the foveated encoding right at the end of the lenses because I honestly can't even see the end of the lenses. So increasing this has only really caused me an issue. Um, it's not really made that much of a difference to the visuals. If you are going to push your visuals, um, just increase your render resolution. Um, this is more like a godlike preset. This doesn't take effect in SteamVR Void. So you can change this, but when you get into a game, that's when you're going to notice that effect. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's sort of what not being said around that tip at the moment is just how taxing that is on the actual encoder of, the, of your GPU. So 97% for 120 with the tip. And 
90 hertz with the chip with the change 80 percent if i then change this back so i'll just do it back to the slider for me to get that back i need to edit the config file and we'll show that in a second so we're now at the max slider this is how the steam link is and i go to 120 hertz you can see i'm about 80 82 percent so 120 hertz without any change is the same load of my encoder as 90 hertz with the change so it is a really really taxing change on your gpu so again i wouldn't honestly change that i mean even if you go back to that down to 90 if you want to do any streaming i've got loads of headroom if i needed to do that just encoding by obs or geforce now or anything that's using the nvenc encoder i've got loads of headroom so it's 65 percent using 90 hertz and the normal change so there's one sort of caveat to doing that tip um, that I've not seen mentioned online. Um, I'm not sure people are checking anything. Um, personally, I've seen it straight away. This isn't a case of getting up graphs and seeing what's wrong. Um, I noticed it straight away, and then that's why I've looked into what was happening. Immediately noticed on this debug graph here that the encoder wasn't actually making frame rate. So that graph itself, when you're in Steam VR, if you want to bring that up, um, I know a lot of people have missed that. If you've got the advanced settings shown on Steam VR, when you've got the um, show debug graph here, turn it on. It won't show anything in your headset, but it will appear on a desktop, and then that means you can add a desktop window and add that into VR, and then you can either just keep it up on here or you can pin it to your pin it to your wrist and keep an eye on it while you're in game. Um, there has been comments saying that this is obviously quite a busy thing in your vision, and it might affect the actual encoder. Um, I've personally not noticed anything different, uh, like no difference at all visually to what the game image is when this is enabled. Um, but this is obviously quite handy to keep an eye on things, especially if you have got problems. I wouldn't go looking for problems, but if you notice problems, then you can bring up the uh, debug graph and see what's going on here. I will say, while Steam Link is quite clearly tuned for latency, I've, I've said that in my first video, um, I wouldn't bother trying to push visuals to match anything like virtual desktop because that encode resolution just isn't as high, even with the force of um, going above the graph. The latency values this gives you, um, I mean, I'm about 20 milliseconds here. This is not comparable to anything but itself. So don't compare these numbers to virtual desktop, air link, link cable, or DisplayPort cable headset. Um, what's What you're going to find, obviously, a normal display DisplayPort cable headset, 90 hertz, um, with an LCD panel, is about 23 milliseconds motion to photon. This is saying 20 milliseconds. That doesn't mean this latency is better than my DisplayPort cable headset. It's meaning that this isn't factoring in that overall motion to, motion to photon. So it's not not showing like the V-Sync latency here. So again, I've got 10 milliseconds of uh, decode, which is immediately apparent you would add that on top of what a display what cable headset is so yeah decode encode you got transmit from the, the wi-fi or cable um just don't compare latency numbers steam link itself has the best latency personally that i've found across AirLink and virtual desktop for the controllers and the fill at 120 fps so that is how i personally play my own streaming stuff is the maximum refresh rate available to get me the lowest latency and covered in the last video, if you really want to bring that latency down again, sacrificing your visuals, you can lower your bitrate and you can lower this encode size, which will bring in a foveated view. So that's two tips, um, basically just two warnings as well. Unfortunate, there's no Ethernet working with this, so I can't actually max this and see what it looks like at maximum bitrate. I'm certainly not buying a new router to do that. And with the increased encode size, my RTX 3080 Ti cannot do that 120 hertz so yeah if you got a 4090 or 40 series card let me know um i should imagine it'd be no problem but that is not a tip that's coming for free i know a lot of people are saying you can increase your visuals that way um but even with a strong ish gpu i mean 3080 is no slouch with the strongest gpu i'm still maxing out the encoder and i'm getting dangerously close even at 90 hertz so again if you had all your other stuff and you were doing streaming you're going to introduce issues there um and that's before even playing any games so this is like a, a normal normal scene it's not exactly taxing um as soon as you start playing games you've got gpu load as well that adds into the the actual power budget of your gpu and then that's going to knock on to the the power available to the encoder as well 
or the actual the performance of the encoder so yeah just be be wary of these tips floating around online um unfortunately i will show you how to do that now there's not much else you can do to improve the visuals on steam link just stick to your render resolution put your bit rate so as much as you can do and then uh, just go as much as you want on that encode size so to do that i've got my steam installed on the default c drive location so it's c program files 86 steam config and then steamvr.vr settings so if that doesn't open a notepad just make right click and open a notepad or text editor or something um, and change the stream format width to 1536. now because i'm in steam link and i'm in steam vr i can save this change but i won't actually see that apply so i'll need to restart steam vr to see that take effect if you put anything over 1536 it's just going to bounce you back to that so that is your maximum value um, you can do your bitrate from here as well, but you honestly can't force anything more than what that Steam Link application does. Again, you are up against a decode process as well. Um, there's not much else you really need to change in here, so I'll just focus on stream format width if you do want to do that. Um, but just be aware of the, the increased load on the, the GPU encoder. Um, you really don't want to mess with the, the overall feel that Steam's tuned here, just for a very, very marginal um visual boost um so yeah that is my tip to you guys i hope it helps cheers guys thanks for watching